Hello everyone, thanks for watching. My name is Nathaniel Kramer, also known as Preaching Musician here on YouTube. This is the third video of a series that we're doing on the road to Calvary and all that Jesus went through for us. And I'm taking it from Isaiah chapter 53 because I think it does a very good job in outlining all the things that he went through for us. And, and not just that, but we can look at prophecy and understand this is what God really wanted us to understand. Even before the time that he came to the cross, he wanted people to know thousands, or in this case, hundreds of years, what he would do, what he would go through. And one of the things that it points out in, this, in verse 3, it says, He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. What a horrible thing to go through, to be despised and rejected of men. And there are some that, uh, that I know, maybe friends, and, and I, I know many people that have gone through experiences when they were despised, when they were rejected of men. And it's not a fun thing to go through. But the Bible says in John chapter 1 that he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Even the very people that he grew up around. In our day and age, we would say, the people you went to high school with, the buddies you grew up with, those very people despised him and rejected him. And we, we get a very clear account of what happened here. Jesus stood up in the, in the synagogue and he, and he taught certain things that he believed. And this was the response that he got. And keep in mind, this is in Nazareth, his hometown. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him unto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way. What an awful thing to go through, having taught, having poured out your heart for the people in your hometown, asking them, begging them to come to God, begging them to get things right, only to have them turn around, be filled with wrath towards you, and try to kill you. These are not people that just had thoughts of killing him. These are people that literally tried to throw him off of a cliff headlong to kill him. And this is how he started his ministry, being despised and rejected by his own people. But if, if we read further in the Gospels and go to chapter 6, we see Jesus laying out different doctrines about who he was and who his father was and the sovereignty of God. And we find that at the end of this passage, the disciples who, had, who he had uh, gathered, who he had a great following at that time. He had multitudes of people. Obviously, he had done many miracles and people knew about that. And, and he became kind of a, a fad of their day. But after Jesus laid out what he believed that he was and who he believed his father was and the sovereignty of God, well, here's the response that he got. I'm going to start in verse 63. It's a long passage. I'm going to go ahead and cut it to the end. It says, and here's Jesus talking. It says, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. From that time, many of his, of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. What is that statement that he made that caused so many to be offended to the point where they turned around, walked away, and never came back? I'll read it again. It says, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. This is a statement that is shocking in many religious groups today, Christian groups today. The fact that God is sovereign over everything, even in the hearts of men, whether or not people are going to even believe what the Bible says, God is sovereign over those very things. That's what Jesus is teaching here. And it is a very, very controversial statement, and even in that day it was. And when he said the truth that he believed, and that obviously he knew was true because he is the truth. They rejected him. They turned away from him. There are other, other doctrines that he taught in this passage. This is the passage where he explains that he is one with his father, that he is God, that his father is God, and that they are one and in one accord. And there are many other amazing things that are taught here. And I encourage you to go through John chapter 6 and read just what was it that caused many of his, of his disciples to turn away and never come back. But the passage continues, after his disciples left him, he turns to the other twelve. The Bible says in verse 67, Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? 
Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I cho chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of, son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. And so even the very apostles that he called personally, that he called out from their whatever they were doing, some were tax collectors, some were fishermen, even one of them would betray him. He was despised and rejected by his own people, by his disciples, and even one of his apostles betrayed him. But it went beyond that. It wasn't just them. It was also the religious leaders. When Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, he explained to Nicodemus why so many religious leaders and others would despise and reject him. He said in John chapter 3, And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds are evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. And if you just read that passage, you understand that the reason why so many people hate Jesus, not just back then but today, is because he is the light, he is the truth. And anytime the truth meddles in the affairs of darkness, anytime the light comes into darkness, it runs, it flees, it doesn't like it, it hates it, it despises it, it rejects it. But it got so bad to the point where even when Jesus was hanging on the cross, the Bible says that they despised and rejected him there. They mocked him. They, they, made, a, they, they made fun of him. They, they were very brutal in their words towards him. And this is while he was dying for the very people that were mocking him. The Bible says in Matthew 27, 41, Likewise also the chief priests, mocking him with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others, himself can, he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him, let him now come down from the cross, and, he, and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. The very people he was dying for. Many of them who, who would come to heaven with him later. And he knew those things while he was hanging on that cross. They were mocking him. They were jeering him. They were scorning him. They were berating him. Throughout his entire ministry, this was a pattern that we see. He was despised and rejected of men. I got two very simple questions I want to close this video with, and, and they're just different thoughts I want you to think about as we leave. Bible, or not the Bible, but I just have a question. It says, do you preach a Jesus who is despised and rejected of men? And today, I, I hear all kinds of teachers and preachers standing up and, and preaching a Jesus that is watered down. Maybe not anything that's unbiblical, but they just leave out the things that people may not like. They leave out the fact that Jesus hates sin, that the Bible says that sinners go to hell, that the Bible talks about the fact that God is holy, that God is righteous, that God is just, and He is the judge over all things. And He will have the final say. And we will all meet Him. And He will be angry at sinners. Things like that are not taught very often today. And it's very sad to see. Because I wonder if we are a little bit ashamed. If when we, when we avoid these things, we're not necessarily just avoiding the, the reproach of men. But we're a little bit ashamed of Him and who He is. Let's not shy away from preaching the full counsel of God and preaching Jesus for everything that He is. Whether or not you are a preacher or whether you are someone who is a Christian who has a testimony, don't let that testimony be shallow. Don't let it be only about things that people would look at, people who are unsaved, people who don't know God, that they would look at and be like, oh, I can agree with that. Those are nice things. Don't just say those things. Say everything. Don't leave out anything, because it's very important that He came and was despised and rejected of men. And if we preach a Savior that is not despised and rejected of men, we are not preaching the same Savior. We are preaching another Jesus. And that's very important to understand. The second question that I have relating to the fact that He was despised and rejected. When He was despised and rejected, He did that for us. He went through all those things for us. And so very simply I ask, are we willing to be despised 
and rejected for him. Many, many, many people in the past, if you read Fox's Book of Martyrs, there are many martyrs who have died and suffered for the cause of Christ. Many of them singing and praising God in the process. In our day and age, in, in America, we're, we're losing a lot of freedoms, we're losing a lot of rights, but look, I can still go knock on people's doors, I can still invite people to church, I can still tell the gospel. I mean, here I am on YouTube talking about the gospel. We still have a lot of freedoms, but even with these freedoms that we have, I see so many shy away because they don't want to be despised and rejected of men, just as their Savior was despised and rejected of men. I encourage you, take a stand, don't shy away from the Savior who did all that for you. Be willing to do what He went through for you. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you.